that should be great for a highlight reel. If you don't knock him out, but you get a decision victory, is that sweet enough for you? No, I'm going for the knockout. You know, especially for the fans. People watch me now because of the knockout of the year. People watch me because of knocking out Ben Askren. People tune in to see that from me. And I'm gonna bring that to Haseem Rockman Jr. Even if it's not a deadly KO, I guarantee you it'll be a TKO and the ref will have to pull me off him. Cause I'm going in there and I'm gonna get fucking vicious and rip his fucking head off. There's not a lot of pressure though. You come from the world of going viral. So in, in boxing, getting a sound win is still good. But do you feel like you have to deliver a knockout? I do. Cause you want those viral moments? I do, I feel like that. And I train for that and I let that pressure in camp fuel me. I let it motivate me and Man, when I have a challenge like this, people aren't gonna believe. Like, there's no reason I should beat this kid on paper. But when it happens, when I knock him out, what the fuck do you want to say? Do you think that as an influencer makes your opponents intimidated or especially nervous to go up against you? Uh, who, maybe. You know, I, I would say so. I, I don't think they like the trolling. But for me, more so it's about fighting in front of 20,000 people. You can't replicate that. And that's something that I've done now a couple of times. And so having that experience under my belt is a really big advantage going into these fights. Take usually in the highest levels of boxing, a fighter or a champion gets eight to 10 weeks of a camp to prepare for an opponent. You're not gonna get eight to 10 weeks to prepare for Team Rock one. Does that change and worry you at all? It doesn't, it doesn't. You know, I'm always ready. Uh, we make adjustments fast. I'm a quick learner. And so yeah, I only had 30 days to switch to training for a southpaw, but for me that doesn't matter. You told Ariel yesterday that you saved the sport and uh, that without you it's, it, was, it was floundering, if that's what you said. Uh, can you explain what you meant by that? Yeah, I mean, no one was watching boxing. There, there wasn't any hype around it. You know, you'd watch occasionally the heavyweight fight or, you know, maybe Floyd, but then as soon as he retired, everything got really boring and there was an era where there wasn't any fights that anyone heard of no names were breaking out it was a very stagnant period and so when I came in and switched the whole game up brought in the social media element brought 60 million followers over into the sport um, you see a difference and, and and it's made an everlasting impact. One more question, the guys. Having, the year of boxing is having right now. It's great. That's what I'm saying. There's so much momentum. And now you see boxing taking over MMA. The, the MMA scene has been fucking dead. The U UFC hasn't been putting on any events that anyone is talking about. Yet boxing has had massive fights back to back to back. And it's been really fun to see. And boxing taking over MMA again. Congratulations. Top three in boxing right now. I would say... Devin Haney, David Benavidez, and Errol Spence. Thank Canelo. you guys, thank you. No Canelo though, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys, thank you everybody.